It was a typical Wednesday evening, and I was browsing through OfferUp, looking for some good deals on vintage chairs. I had just moved into a new apartment and was eager to decorate it with unique and stylish pieces. Each piece in my house would have a cool and unique story. That was my idea of expressing myself in my apartment. I did not like the commercial, trendy stuff that everybody had. I wanted to make it special for my guests and my feasting eyes as I lived my life. As I scrolled through the listings, I came across a strange and unique one that caught my attention. It was a listing for a vintage wooden chair that looked like it had seen better days. The photo was blurry and the description was vague, but something about it intrigued me. The price was ridiculously low, almost too good to be true. As long as the chair was in good physical condition, I could repair the cosmetics and make it really cool. I hesitated for a moment, but my curiosity got the best of me and I decided to contact the seller. I messaged the seller and asked if the chair was still available. To my surprise, the seller, who went by the name The Collector 69420, told me that the chair was indeed still available and that he could meet me the next day to meet up and sell it. We arranged to meet at a local coffee shop the next day, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and anticipation. I had always loved the thrill of finding unique and interesting items on OfferUp, and this chair seemed like it would be the perfect addition to my new apartment. When I arrived at the coffee shop, I saw a man sitting at a table in the corner, surrounded by various items that looked like they had been plucked from an antique store. He was an older man, with thinning gray hair and a kind smile. He introduced himself as the collector 69420 and motioned for me to sit down. As we began to talk, I couldn't help but notice he seemed a bit strange. He spoke in a strange, almost cryptic manner, and his eyes seemed to dart around the room as if he was looking for something, like in some paranoid state. I brushed it off as just my nerves getting the best of me, and tried to focus on the task at hand. We made the exchange, and I took the chair home with me. As I examined it more closely, I realized that it was even more worn and tattered than I had originally thought. The wood was warped and would need some work to fix. The surface needed a significant amount of sanding and a fresh coat of paint. There were spats of red paint that were really in the wood, but for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to throw it away. It had a certain charm and character that I found endearing. That night, I had a strange dream. In the dream, I was sitting in the chair, surrounded by the darkness. I couldn't see anything. Suddenly, I realized I had a blindfold on. The blindfold was taken off of my face, and a man with a hammer struck me in the head. I suddenly woke up and felt my head. I was fine, but the dream felt extremely real. The next day, I examined the underside of the chair. Stapled to the bottom of the chair was a card that said, Elite Hunting. That's a funny joke, like in the movie Hostel. I took the card off and put it to the side. I started fixing and warping the wood back to its original condition. I had made some good progress and wrapped up for the day. I found myself in the chair again in a dungeon-like setting. This time, there was a man in a butcher's getup. He had a knife. I was terrified as he came close to me. He started cutting me multiple times. I was really feeling the pain in my body as he applied the cuts. He finally applied the killer blow, and I woke up. My body was sore for some reason from the dream. Why am I feeling pain from a dream? What is really going on? The next day, I reluctantly started working on the chair. There was something going on with this chair, but I was committed to finishing what I started. I fixed the warping and started the sanding process. After I had spent a considerable amount of time, the chair was finally sanded. All that was left was the paint. I figured I would do that the next day. On the third night, I was in the chair again, bound by rope. I heard the sound of a chainsaw behind me starting up. Oh no. I tried to escape, but I couldn't get out of the ropes. 
the person behind me came to the front of me and put the spinning chainsaw blades right in front of my face. I squirmed in terror as the figure was getting excited at my agony. The chainsaw cut through my skull slowly. The blade reached my brain, and suddenly I woke up. That was it. I was done with this chair. I took it to the backyard and smashed it to pieces. I put it in my fire pit and I lit it on fire. I watched it burn until the last ember. I never bought another item from an online selling site again. Well, except Amazon. I believe the chair I bought was used in multiple killings and the ghosts of the dead were still attached to the chair. When you buy something, first consider what the object was used for in its lifetime of ownership. You might find out that it was used for something terrible, and you don't want to suffer the same fate. It was late at night, and I was scrolling through the OfferUp app on my phone. I was on the hunt for a new piece of furniture to add to my home, and I stumbled upon a listing that caught my eye. The picture was blurry, but I could make out a silhouette of a beautiful wardrobe closet. The price was unbelievably low, so I messaged the seller to inquire about it. To my surprise, the seller responded almost immediately. She told me that the dresser had been in her family for generations and they were selling it because they were moving out of the country. She said that they needed to get rid of it quickly, which is why the price was so low. I was a little skeptical, but the seller seemed sincere, so I decided to arrange a meeting to take a look at the wardrobe closet in person. We agreed to meet at a gas station on the outskirts of town. Meeting at a random gas station is a little creepy, but I figured it was just a precaution on the seller's part. I don't know them, and they don't know me. I arrived at the gas station and parked my car. As I was getting out, I noticed a car parked a few spaces down from me. It was a van with tinted windows. I couldn't see inside, but I had a feeling it was the seller's car. I walked over to the car and knocked on the window. The window rolled down, and I was met with the face of a young woman. She looked nervous, but she smiled and asked if I was the one who had messaged her about the wardrobe closet. I confirmed that I was, and she told me to follow her to a nearby warehouse. So I obliged. I drove for a few minutes and eventually arrived at a run-down industrial area. The warehouse was at the end of a long gravel driveway, and it looked abandoned. The woman parked the car and got out and I followed her inside. The warehouse was dark and musty, and there was no electricity. The only light came from a small flashlight that the woman was carrying. We walked through a maze of boxes and furniture until we finally reached the corner where the wardrobe closet was being stored. Now that I could see it for the first time, it was even more beautiful than I had imagined. It was an ordinate, dark wood piece with intricate carvings and a huge mirror. The woman handed me a piece of paper with a bill of sale, and I handed her the cash. I was about to leave when she suddenly stopped me. Wait, she said. Since we're here, I have something else to show you. I didn't want to be rude. She seemed normal, so I agreed. She led me to the back of the warehouse, where there was a small room with a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling. In the center of her room was a pedestal with a glass case on top. Inside the case was a small doll that looked ancient. Its hair felt like it was made of real human hair, and its eyes were made out of glass. It was one of the creepiest things I had ever seen, but for some reason, it looked very interesting to me at that time. The woman told me that the doll had been in her family for generations, and that it was a valuable antique. She said she was willing to sell it to me for a very low price. I was hesitant, but something about the doll fascinated me. I asked how much she wanted for it, and she named a price that was almost too good to be true. However, I broke my trance the doll had on me, and decided to get my wardrobe closet and leave. There was something about the doll that was inviting me to get it, and to take it home, but I just couldn't do it. Weeks later, I was reading through the local newspaper. I saw that a family had been murdered and the main suspect was the girl I bought the wardrobe closet from. There were three other pictures of suspects in the murders, three really big guys that the story said were her brothers, 
in the picture of the crime scene, you could see a body lying on the floor. And right next to the body was that doll. When you're doing online shopping, make sure you do your homework on whatever it is you're trying to buy. If there's an offer that pops up when you're going to get the first item, maybe there's a reason that they didn't advertise it. Emily had been scrolling through OfferUp, looking for a new dresser for her bedroom. She had just moved into a new apartment and was determined to make it feel like home. She was looking for a classic, antique design. She liked the strong quality of older designs and wanted it to last longer so she didn't have to keep going to places like Ikea every few years to get something new and trendy. It just needed to look good and hold her clothes. After searching what felt like hours, Emily came across a listing that caught her eye. It was a beautiful antique dresser and the price was unbeatable. She messaged the seller and to her surprise, they responded very quickly. The seller, who went by the username Jester, seemed friendly enough. They agreed to meet at a nearby gas station that night to complete the transaction. Emily arrived at the gas station, feeling nervous. She had never met a stranger from the internet before, but Jester seemed like a normal person. If she wanted the dresser, she would have to let her guard down a little. She spotted the seller standing by a beat-up old van, and they exchanged greetings. Jester opened the back of the van to reveal the dresser, and it was even more beautiful in person. Emily couldn't believe her luck. She handed over the cash, and Jester helped her load the dresser into her car. The first few days of bringing the dresser home were uneventful. Emily spent hours organizing her clothes and admiring the dresser's intricate carvings. But as time went on, strange things started to happen. One night, Emily woke up to find her dresser drawers open and her clothes scattered across the floor. She would have been more concerned, but thought it was her demon cat that would consistently mess with her stuff. Her cat was a free spirit and probably saw the dresser as a new toy to enjoy. But the next night, the same thing happened, and the night after that. Emily started having vivid nightmares. In them, the seller, Jester, would appear and chase her through a dark labyrinth maze. The maze seemed to be made of a wood material, similar to the dresser. She would wake up, wrenched in a sweat. The dream felt real, and she felt like her life was in danger in the dream. Obviously, you can't die in your dream, she thought but it felt so real at that time. In her paranoia, she got up and looked around the house. No one was there, just her cute little cat. She would love and pet her cat and then turn back in for the night. After multiple days of clothes being flung everywhere and night terrors, Emily decided to do some digging. She searched for Jester's username on social media, but came up empty. She even contacted OfferUp's customer service but they couldn't provide any information on Jester's identity. The problem with a lot of sites like Craigslist and OfferUp is that you can open up one simply by providing an email that you've just created, and poof, you're a seller. Emily was starting to hear strange noises in her house, creaks and cracks, sometimes something that sounded like footsteps. Sometimes it sounded like something was moving across the table or kitchen counter. When she checked though, Nothing had moved at all. One evening, as Emily was getting ready for bed, she heard a faint scratching sound coming from the dresser. She cautiously approached it, and to her horror, saw that the carvings on the front of the dresser had shifted around. Suddenly, it looked completely different. That was it for Emily. She decided she had enough. Emily had finally determined that something was wrong with the dresser, and decided to do something about it. She took all of her clothes out, she dragged the dresser to the curb in the front of her house and called the trash company. The trash truck picked it up and suddenly her nightmares had stopped. With her clothes now piled up on the floor, she took a trip to Ikea and bought a plywood dresser. She is much happier now as her clothes stay in the drawer. She did not realize that anything was going to happen, but buying the dresser on OfferUp was bad news for her. She never used OfferUp again. Sometimes, items can seem like a great deal, but you don't know the history of the object. Anything can be cursed. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. 
Um, we're up to 89 subscribers now, so I want to thank everybody for that. I want to thank some specific people. Uh, William Victor Newbold, The Adventures of Dogsy and DJ, Goku 2019, Fun Game Clips, Mary Herrick, Alliance of Calgon, Fish, Alex Craig, Communist Potato, Patrick Olinger, Robert D. Anda, A. Shugoth, Another Patriot, Aaron Lacaze, Junior Rivas, Glenna Beth Dorcius Shipman, Reagan Rotos, George Linares Jr., Harlan Fire, Chris Worker, Will the AI Art Guy, He Jung Sky Star, Luna Official, RXGE, Awad Gonna Take Sea Look, and a special shout out to Dorothy White, who found me on TikTok and said that she enjoys these stories. That's exactly why I'm doing it. Uh, I appreciate the support. Take care, everybody. In the upcoming months, you're going to see hiking stories, dates from hell, and a cabin in the woods story with a snowstorm. I uh, promise it'll be good. All right, take care. Always remember to keep your guard up, identify threats, and stay safe out there. I will talk to you again real soon. Obviously, you can't dreams in your dreams and you're dying. Obviously, you can't dream.